Hello and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy and this is the lecture for the month of February 2012 and it is entitled Wait the Dead Giveaways. And what this is is a workflow lecture on how to make sure that you are adding weight to your characters. Um, specifically, how to make a really heavy character look really heavy. All right, so if you have, let's say, a giant ogre, a gigantic elephant, a quadruped, biped, no matter what it is, there are a few concepts that I want to give you and, and have you work into your workflow so that you'll never be lost. These are very, very simple concepts, but they have very far-reaching applications uh, in your work. Excuse me. So um, this was first proposed, I think this was actually probably the first resource requested in the resource wish list in the forums. And I've been waiting to do it because I wanted to have the, I wanted to wait for the right moment and I also wanted to make sure that everyone was on board with the workflow. So there's a core uh, subscri subscriber base to the site right now and there's a lot of people who have been at the site over a year. I think pretty much by now everyone is on board with the concept of workflow, of the concept of having a repeatable and, and replicable process to doing things and so I think it's appropriate that now we get into this. I didn't want this to be a lecture where I just animate something that's heavy and you don't have really anything that you can follow or repeat to add it to your animation. So this is the opposite of, of, of a demo of a walkthrough in terms of uh, the application of this. This is 100% workflow in terms of how you, we give away, how we, how we use the dead giveaways for, for the weight. And there are some very, it, it's, it's so simple, but they're so powerful. So let's start with just a little bit of background. Humans, you and I, hopefully, uh, you and I have the ability to judge weight and it's a combination of a lot of small things about the way something moves. The number one thing, of course, is speed. We just assume that if something moves slower than another thing, that it just weighs more. And you can get away with 60 to 70% of your weight by doing that. All right, just matching the size to the speed of your animation. Now that's not all you want to do and I've heard, rightly so, some animators, some, some teachers, mentors at Animation Mentor, uh, students, alumni, pros, everyone saying that like, oh well I don't want to just animate it slower, you know, that's cheating or that's wrong or that's not how you show weight and they're right. Okay, they're very right, and I've heard them. I, I've heard you know people basically curse the the idea of speed as weight up and down, but it is the most solid cue we can use. So the first dead giveaway is the speed of the character. But I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about how the speed can be deceiving and what we need to do in order to understand how to apply the speed into our workflow. And I'll do that in just a few seconds. Okay. The next thing we're going to um, try to understand is scale. And why scale and speed go hand in hand is because we don't really have a a uh, scale when we're when we're working, we don't have normally don't have a lot of reference objects. We don't have a lot of uh, a lot of the things like going that would kind of dictate the the scale of of the creature or or the or the human or whatever it is while we're working. And I'm going to show you how scale and size actually work together. Now, scale doesn't just mean weight. That would be me saying, like, hey, if you want to animate something with a lot of weight, then animate it with a lot of weight. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying scale is an issue that you need to be understanding of and, and, and use. And then the, the, the last and, and pretty much the, the subtle workflow choice that uh, a lot of people miss but adds that last, like, 10% to the, the real solid weight of a character is materials, okay? 
And materials doesn't just mean like, are, are they made out of, you know, are, are they, you know, a, a, a rock creature? Well, obviously a rock creature looks heavy, like the, like Grignac from Galaxy Quest, for instance. All right, that's not what I'm saying either. Uh, materials has to do with how different materials are dead giveaways for the kinds of motion that we're going to put into our characters. It's all very interesting. And I hope that by the end of this talk, you will feel like you have a few workflow choices that will give you all the ammunition you need to make those performance choices and, and really lock in the weight of your character no matter what. Now the reason that I'm harping on a very heavy character is because that is the end of the spectrum that is the most difficult and applies these workflow concepts the most. If I was going to do like a super super light character then that wouldn't make as much sense. So we're, we're not going to focus on the, the easy one that you can pretty much animate almost however you want because light in, in animation, if you have light plus like speedy, that's almost like floaty and you can, you can pretty zip them around and you know, they have no weight. So because that is, that skirts the issue of having a, the, the problem of your animation having no weight, we're going to focus on the other end of the spectrum. All right. And this was the first resource that was put into the resource wish list, I believe, in response to uh, Tim Sorman's Ask Video Mail question, which was, uh, w which had to do with animating two different characters. How do you make one look like it's, like it has a lot of weight and the other that it doesn't? And I answered that question and there are a few things that I'm going to um, go back over in this, but this is, um, for, for all intents and purposes, a really in-depth look at those workflow issues that will help you out, okay? So let's, the first thing I want to take a look at is the issue of speed and then scale, okay? So in terms of workflow, your speed is just your timing, right? You choose poses and you choose timing at, as inherently in the blocking process. All right, so let's just look at this Miocene that I just threw together. And we have a guy standing here, and we have a ball, all right? And this ball has some keyframes on it. And I'm sure you've, you know, you can recognize, you know, this arc, right? It's a bouncing ball. This might be a little plateaued, all right? And we just have a, a bouncing ball basically doing its thing, right? So, here we have what we would call probably a, I don't know, maybe a, a basketball or a, a rubber ball or a beach ball or something. And it's moving, of course, under its own kind of like volition right now. That doesn't make much sense. But uh, you know, ignoring the fact that it doesn't have any energy loss as it's bouncing, this looks like it's the right speed for the weight that it is. Okay? Now, what is dictating how fast this is moving? Basically, gravity at the top of the arc, right here, this frame, at the top of the arc, it's almost as if there was a, um, I can't even make one, it's almost as if there's a table underneath it. And the table is all of a sudden removed and then it starts falling, okay? Now the speed that it, it, it gains that acceleration is gravity, okay? Now, all objects, all objects are affected by gravity the same. Well, that's not really true. The, the bigger the object is, the more gravity it has, but on the scale that we're talking about, basically being pulled towards the Earth, the, uh, the, the size of the object or the weight of the object really does not matter. Actually, what's interesting is, Gravity doesn't pull things down, it pulls things together. So the Earth is so massive and it has so much mass that it pulls you towards it. But did you know that when you jump off the ground, the Earth actually moves away from you and when you come back to the Earth, it actually, uh, the Earth rises to meet your feet. Now it is an absolutely 
infinitesimal amount. It's probably like zero point, like a billion zeros, you know, one centimeter that the Earth actually moves. But everything that has mass has gravity. So it's kind of interesting to think about. But when we look at a bouncing ball, basically the speed of this is dictated by gravity. Now the speed of a, let's say, a bigger ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this ball. Okay. Let's see here. Oops. Edit. Duplicate. Duplicate input graph. Okay. Now I'm going to group it and I'm going to move it over here. So now you can see we have two of them. I'm going to scale this ball up. Okay. Now what ended up happening, somehow the same speed does not work at this scale, okay? And that's where, this is the first time we're going to start using these terms together. This speed doesn't work at this scale. Why? Because if you dropped this ball from this height, okay, it's at the top of its arc right now. Right? So it's almost as if there's a, there's a, um, um, just constrain this. I don't think we've missed, I hope you haven't missed too much. Just forgot that I need to have the right, uh, right size of my window. Apologize for that. Um, if you drop this ball from a table, all of a sudden, boop get rid of the table and then it starts falling, it's going to be at the same speed as this ball on the same frame. Why? Because gravity affects all objects, all objects the same, all right? Doesn't matter if you drop a feather or a brick in a vacuum, the feather and the brick will both fall at the exact same time, okay? <clears throat> so, so take a look if you you know taking a look at this it's obviously some it's obviously something is wrong because the 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 this ball hits the ground at the same frame as this small one meaning that it travels faster so all of a sudden we start seeing that gravity dictates the speed of an object at different scales okay so one thing that we can do is is duplicate this one one more time, okay? I'm going to group it, and I'm going to move it up to this one, and then on the frame that th this one hits the ground, basically this one is traveling the distance that this one has to, and I'm going to change the speed of this object to match the speed of this one. Now it's going to go past this 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 frame because I'm retiming it basically, um, but you'll get the picture, okay? So basically it starts up here, okay? Starts up here and needs to get to just down here by this frame. This will make a little bit more sense as, we, as we're going along here, all right? So I'm just going to Retime this a little bit like that. Looks like I dragged it forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that many frames. And now I'm going to do just a little bit of work on this curve to make sure that it still looks like a nice bouncy ball, a nice plateau. And we're gonna have to do just a little bit more retiming. Okay, so that, that's the wrong direction. We wanna, we wanna actually tighten it up a little bit. There we go. All right, so there you have it. So now this ball is even with this one. You see that? So it actually falls with the, the, um, the small one. You see that? Okay. Meaning now the scale is actually matched to the speed. So let's watch. Okay, now let's hide this one because this one is distracting us now. Here we go. You see that? This finally looks like the right scale 
or sorry, the right speed for the scale of the ball. And believe it or not, a, a ton, not a little bit, a ton of the inherent, like built in, just the, how humans can tell the weight of something by the speed has to do with gravity has to do with it because of all of the effects that gravity has on a moving body while it's while it's in motion the speed that an object falls to the ground is 100% gravity meaning and I'm jumping a little bit ahead here but meaning like your footfall if your foot is coming down and it's uh, it, you know, it's a human-sized foot and you lift your foot maybe six to eight inches off the ground in a, in a run, then it's only going to get a certain speed and have a certain number of frames in the air, okay? Whereas something that takes a big step has a completely different speed, all right? This ball basically has, has four more frames Pretty much four more frames, so one, two, three, actually it only has three more frames of acceleration than this small ball. So by the time it actually does get near the ground, boom, it actually is moving much faster than this other one is, meaning you have to use your knowledge of gravity to dictate the speed of all the different parts of the body. All right, so I don't wanna to jump too far ahead. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Um, but this is how scale dictates your speed. Basically, what we call timing in animation, you need to know that there are certain constraints that dictate this. So, my advice is always to have in your workflow, if you're trying to do something that has a really crazy scale, is to do this bouncing ball exercise and maybe even keep it in your scene. All right, so I'm pretending like it's like we're animating Cloverfield 2 and this character has this big paw that like, like smashes on the ground or maybe Wrath of the Titans coming out soon. Uh, you know, you see these gigantic creatures and they're smashing things and whatever. How do you choose the speed for that? Well, if you're, if you're, aware of and you're contemplating the, and you're, you're cognizant of all of the effects of gravity on the body, then it's very easy. So I just, I made this other group, okay? And I just pretended that, um, let me hide this one. So we, we still have, we still have our, um, you know, our, our little bouncing ball, right? So I just pretended that this is, Basically, this ball up here, it's huge. It's way high up there. I have a very wide angle camera right now so you can see it, okay? I'm just pretending that this is the, like the, the paw or like the, the claw of something like going and taking a big step. Actually, you can barely even see it. Let me, um, there we go. See that? Now, does that look slow or is it? Well, the answer is yes because I, 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 I worked it out beforehand before I turned the camera on. Um, or is it the, the, the scale dictating the speed for that? Okay? So just imagine, you know, this thing comes around the corner and then like rears up his hand and like puts it down. Now you can speed it up a little bit because it's the hand like, you know, it's using its hand, but maybe it's just stepping and it's in it kind of like us, we kind of do almost a controlled fall and we just put that foot out there and we kind of fall onto it. Um, we don't normally stomp our feet, right? So if it's just gravity, you know, this is, this is the, the, the right size. And so if you want to see another, another view of this, here it is. Okay. So by the, by, by, you know, by the time it gets down here, it's actually moving like super, super fast. Look, it's, it's actually moving um, basically one body length or more per, per key. Whereas this, 
this little itty bitty one down here, the fastest it ever moves is basically, let's see here, is pretty much, you know, midway up the shin down to the foot. Okay, so that is how we start to understand and unravel this mystery of why the speed actually makes things look heavier. Um, it has so much to do with gravity and now we start to be able to put those concepts into a body. Okay, so let's, um, let's transition real quickly um, and I'm gonna do just a little bit of talking about um, uh, materials, okay? So we've talked about speed and scale and we're going to talk about materials now, okay? So here is just a, uh, just a little sketch sketchbook, okay? Um, so let's, let's, um, let's talk about materials. When I talk about materials, I don't mean like, is it like a, a guide built out of rock, like, you know, the rock monster I already mentioned from Galaxy Quest or anything like that. I'm talking about things like connective tissues. So if we have, let's say, like an ant, okay? So an ant, got the, got the head up front, kind of got the thorax, shaped like this, or sorry, the, uh, the abdomen and then the thorax, right? And then it's got its legs kind of like this. Okay. All right. And then if we think about something like an elephant, okay? So I'm going to draw these basically the, the, same, uh, the same size here on the, on the, on the page, but the, you know that these are very, very different scales, okay? So we have uh, an elephant with its long trunk like that, you know, big ears, and basically stands pretty s straight legged, if I'm not mistaken, and you know, basically like that, okay? Maybe we add some tusks. <clears throat> okay. So when I say materials, what are the materials that hold these two things together? They're actually very similar. Exoskeleton and skeletal structure, um, they, the exoskeleton might be on the outside, but the, they perform the same function, okay? They're basically stiff organic materials that um, either contain or support the, the organs and the, the mus muscles and sinews, okay? However, with an ant, the surface area and the strength of all of the connective tissue, or sorry, all of the, the skeletal tissue is so much stronger than it is proportional to the mass of the uh, creature uh, than an elephant that a, an ant can carry something like 40 times its own weight. Okay, whereas an elephant, yeah, it can carry a lot of weight, but it can't carry anywhere near um, the same amount of weight um, as, a, uh, as an ant can, okay? So the, the elephant has a skeleton that is, that is at the scale of an elephant, okay? Let's just um, put in like the scapula and the humerus and the forearm radius ulna and the little toes. Basically all, all mammals are pretty much the same structure, okay? This, all of these bones are basically holding up weight that is disproportional uh, to, the, to the, the strength of the bones if, if, you, if you compare it to the insect, okay? So what does that mean? It means that when you look at the movement of a character that weighs a lot, 
what happens is you see the materials that are put it, making it you know, together, pulling it together, are actually, they don't scale well. Okay, so we're talking about scale again, but scale inside the, the, the creature itself. Okay, that's what we're, 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 we're really focusing on. So a bone in a tiny, tiny, tiny little creature like, like this, basically in terms of the structural, the, the, how it's combined and the, the surface area compared to the mass of the, the creature, does not scale very well. And so at large scales, okay, on large scales like an elephant, we see that the connective tissues and muscles and supporting muscle groups have a really, ha are a dead giveaway, okay? So let me, sh let me show you uh, kind of what I mean uh, by that. Um, I'm gonna hide these layers, okay? They're a dead giveaway. Um, here is a um, here's a dog, okay. And a dog, uh, you know, some dogs have ears that um, kind of stick up like this, right? All right. <clears throat> well, what controls how this ear like moves back and forth, right? It's muscles, and it's and it's it's actually tons of little like supporting muscles. All these muscles. In the, um, in the scalp and, and on the skull of the dog, right? There's not actually muscles in here. There's a little bit of muscle, just a tiny bit, but mostly it's all cartilage. It's like our ear, okay? So when a dar dog perks up its ear like this, or when it lets it uh, basically, you know, lie flat down, okay? It's, it's basically the difference between the muscles in the scalp, in the head right here, relaxing or flexing. Now, we've already established that muscles don't scale very well. So, if you have a really, really big dog, it has to hold up way too much cartilage in order for it to be able to move this ear quickly. And basically, you have another uh, a case of speed versus scale again. Meaning it can't, if it, the ears perk up, they're not going to instantly, like on a small dog, like, like just shoot up. They're going to, it's going to raise and basically all of that weight needs to be negotiated. It needs to be, you need to account for it, okay? What we look for, what the visual cue is, what the dead giveaway is, is the relationship between these supporting muscles and the scale of what it is moving, okay? So cartilage scales pretty well for what it does, meaning uh, a cartilage ear stays pretty stiff, I would say, up until ridiculous scales. So tigers have uh, big ears. There's some monkeys with some majorly big ears. Um, so it scales pretty well for what, for what they are. And you know, this, this stiff kind of cartilage. I know there's beagles who have like, made, and basset hounds who have majorly big ears, but they're totally floppy. I'm talking about this kind of um, cartilage, that stiff cartilage. Um, when you get up to the size of an elephant though, you know, you kind of get back into the realm of, okay, the ears basically are 100% overlap. And yeah, the, the elephant can move them, but it takes a big muscle, a lot of time, time speed, hopefully you're getting this, um, to move it back and forth. And you've seen, you know, the elephant that's like walking and it like moves its ears back and forth and that's pretty much the fastest it can move it back and forth when it's like fanning itself or I'm not sure what they're doing when they do that. It might be actually um, a heat thing. I'm not sure. So um, they're not like a chihuahua that might be like just sleeping and then boing those ears just go up when they hear something. Okay, right? So we look at the materials and pretty much our workflow is changed like this. We decide 
where the materials are starting to break down at the scale that we are talking about. And then we allow those parts of the body to really, really be dictated by gravity. Okay? And it's, it's very simple. You just pick a speed that works for the scale and then you just let gravity do its business. Now that might mean that if it's a, a, a gigantic dog like Cerebrus in, in um, or I guess he, he was called Fluffy in uh, Harry Potter, you know, the three-headed dog, you know, if it's that dog waking up and like its ears perking up, all that means is that you just take those ears and move them a little bit slower because they need to raise and where the materials start to break down, which is the tips of the ears, you have a lot of overlap, all right? One thing that I've noticed is kind of a rule of thumb is that it seems to me that the middle of, of the limbs, extremities, like parts attached to a character, whatever you want to call it, um, the middle is, it holds up a lot better than the, the, the base and, the, and the, the tip or the very extreme. So for instance, on a cat, um, <clears throat> okay, a cat, <clears throat> I'm drawing basically like a house cat, okay, Okay, when it's standing, okay, you might have a tail that is very active and you can almost do some performance with that tail. It's almost like, you know, if it sees something, it can, you know, flick the tail and whatever. And, and all the way up to, you know, I would say not the major cats, um, but, you know, all the way up to, you know, certainly all, all breeds of house cat and even up to, I don't know, maybe say probably cheetahs, you see this. But then, the, then what happens is when you start getting into like a tiger uh, or lion or even some of the bigger, like a, a big cheetah or a, a, a panther or a mountain lion, all those, what you see is you see a lot of this shape. Okay? Whereas a cat can stick it straight up, you know, can curl it like this you know, can go around like that, right? But a, I'm talking about house cat, but a tiger, you see a lot of this pose. Why is that? I feel it's because when we're talking about the materials, the, 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 the muscles in the, in the base of the spine and, the, and, the, and basically the rump right here, keep this section very, um, very stiff, but since it has the entire weight of the rest of the tail, Basically, the tail as a whole kind of swoops back and forth, and the middle is 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 is, uh, is able to hold its shape. But then the tip, the tip, it, it, the the tail might be. It almost looks almost exactly like this, like an elbow. But the tip might be doing some, you know, just a little bit of extra movement. And also, if there's like a jump or something, the tail, the tip, kind of does those little flicks which is the overlap. So the muscles and the connective tissues, it's almost as if they scale better in the middle of an object. Same thing with the ears, okay? Same thing with the ears. You'll find that the entire ear as a whole on a big creature, the entire thing, like a little creature, it goes around and it can do whatever it wants with, wants with the ears, but a big creature, it might take a big step and the whole ear, basically the base, moves, the middle stays fine, and then at the very end, that soft cartilage, the, the, that material, we're, we're thinking about materials, that soft material just does a little bit of a flick on the end. So it steps, the whole thing goes, and then just a little bit um, on the end. Okay? So it's not even. The materials don't scale evenly either. Okay, so when we talk about materials, that's what we're focusing on. It's an, it's an understanding and a planning for, because we're talking about workflow as well, it's a planning for 
uh, identifying those parts of the body that have not scaled well and are going to mean a lot more visual cues, dead giveaways for how big this character is, how much this character weighs, all of that mass over that leg, all of that mass, you know, in the swinging of the tail, whatever it may be, okay? So basically you can um, just pencil that into your workflow already, okay? So we've already talked about speed and scale. We've talked about materials. Now uh, I'd like to uh, take the rest of the time and look at a walk cycle of Nico that I did um, for the quick quad walk and I've changed it into a character twice the size of Nico and I think you'll I think you'll agree that it pretty much nails the uh, it hits the nail on the head because we we took into consideration all of these um, all of these issues okay now you'll also notice that I didn't scale Nico it's just two different sized Nikos right next to each other and it, it doesn't really matter. Your eye looks at the one that's supposed to be heavy and it just kind of goes with it. It says, okay, that, that does look heavy. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna believe that somehow that's you know, heavier next to this other one that's not as heavy. So you don't actually really even have to like scale it in order for it to work. I might scale it. I'm not sure how well Nico scales. That's, why, that's another reason why I didn't scale it. Um, and so I might scale it right at the end just to give us even more of kind of like hit it home in terms of how, uh, how, how big the, 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 this character is. But um, let's, um, let's switch gears real quick and just jump in and, um, and see, uh, see what we can see here. I'm going to save this quickly though. All right. So here we have um, Nico. And Nico is a, a rig. It's available for free in, uh, at uh, www.creativecrash.com. And uh, he is the star of the quick quad walk lecture as well. And here is the quick quad walk. Now, the quick quad walk doesn't mean a fast quad walk. It meant a quad walk where the character is um, basically cycling in as few steps as possible. It's a workflow lecture on how to get your character basically cycling nicely. So here we have Nico, and I would say that he pretty much looks the size of um, maybe a large, uh, a lar like a, a um, I don't know, like a large uh, cheetah. He looks, he still looks very agile. It is a 24 frame walk cycle. So that is pretty good in terms of the speed of a, of a cat that size. I think he looks like a cat with basically a beak. I don't know. Maybe he's more dog-like. I can't really tell. So he, uh, that is a good speed for a cat. When I'm teaching the Animals and Creatures Masterclass at Animation Mentor, it's amazing. You should check it out if you're an animator already and you think you have what it takes to take that masterclass. You need to submit a reel. Um, check them out. But um, when I'm taking the Animals and Creatures Master class, uh, you know, we pretty much identified that a tiger's uh, very comfortable kind of like sauntering walk is somewhere between like 24, 24 is fast for, for a tiger walk, but it's normally around like normally like 32 frames. So um, this is a little, bit, um, a little bit quicker than that, a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter. because so we're talking about weight, a little bit lighter. Okay. Now the first thing that I did was um, copied the uh, character, and as you can see, I have this this other one right here. Just really quickly, um, to see what happens if I scale this. I'm not sure what's going to happen. I just want to check before I get too excited. Oops. I'm gonna delete the scale first. Okay. It needs to be just needs to be adjusted <clears throat> the uh, the translate on the on the world con that's no problem I can I can figure that out that's not a big deal okay cool so the first thing that we want to do is because yes um, speed is intimately involved with scale and we want to um, we want to get as much mileage as we can for that first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scale the keys basically the I'm going to slow him down by half 
And what this is going to do is it's going to give us a like 60% version of Nico that is very, um, it, 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 it has the foundation, but he's a lot of work. And you'll see, you'll see why. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select his uh, controllers. Luckily, all of Nico's controllers are NURBS curves. You should probably not be fooling around with any rigs that don't have all NURBS uh, curves controllers. Um, just a, a word of advice. So I'm going to do a quick math operation, multiply equals two, and then I'm going to just bring this back to frame one so that he's on frame one. Now here we have our character walking basically twice as slow. All right, so that was the first thing that I, I basically did. Now we need to always keep scale in mind. It's not enough that we slow him down. And I agree with anyone that will tell you, and that you can find plenty of people who will, that this, the, the speed is not the answer. You can't just slow somebody down and expect them to look um, bigger. So the next part of our workflow is if we made this animation at this speed, we're going to pick some of the connective tissues, we're gonna pick some of the extremities, the limbs, the materials that are going to break down, okay? And so what I really like to go into is the shoulders on a quad, and I like to really make it so that there is a big fast in to the ground on the, on the arms. Why? Because basically what it is is that it's the character going into the muscles of the shoulder because the legs or the, the, the arms or the forearms are not strong enough to basically take all of that weight on its own. So I'll show you what I mean. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this um, front paw and take a look at the curve. And as you can see, there's a really nice slow in to the, to the ground here. So we're going to change that drastically. He lifts it up. Here it is right before it, it gets um, placed, okay? I'm just gonna lift this way up, like right here. I'm also going to just set a, um, a pose on the fingers so that we get a ton of overlap, um, even in like the two frames that this is going to happen. Um, always looks nice, okay? And then I'm going to take just this Y curve, all right, and do a little bit of editing on it so that it really fasts into this pose. Break this tangent and then drag this up so that basically just goes right into there, okay, like that. All right, so let's see this. It's up and then boom. Okay, I want it even higher. Why? Because not necessarily like this creature would really actually raise his foot this high, but because I get a better, I get an even more dramatic fast in to this pose. I'm gonna go even higher. See how this feels like a big stomp? Now is the moment where I was talking about I'm gonna go into the shoulders. Okay, so I know that this is a, another workflow thing. We use a lot of offsets when we made the walk cycle for Nico here. Okay, so I know that if uh, I have my entire frame range here and this is going to be moving up and down, that I can just set my first and last key and then basically put the poses that I want in the animation and it'll, it'll sort itself out when I, um, when I offset it. So right when it's placed, I want it a little bit down, downwards, okay? And then it basically, as it takes the weight, all right, so I'm just gonna copy this, copy this right here, and then give myself, I'm not sure what that was, maybe 12 frames. Um, and then, um, actually, you know what, I can do this, I can do this with the keys that I already have. It looks like it looks like I have enough keys. So let me just um, just delete that. 
So as it comes down and it starts to raise up, copy this right here and can actually even go up higher. And let's actually have it come back here a little bit. Okay, so see now already it feels like the, uh, the hand, once it gets out in front, it's almost as if the elbow cannot hold up that hand anymore. It swings it and it uses momentum, but at a certain point, this just all goes. And that elbow, those materials, start breaking down and it just drops and it, the speed at which it drops dictates how heavy this object is because of the the gravity pulling it down is overcoming that elbow okay so um, a visual cue this is a visual dead giveaway see it's almost as if yeah sure sure you're pulling this arm forward and you're doing a basically a bicep curl right here, but then at a certain point, it's just boom, you have to extend it. This is exhausted, and it happens, it happens instantly, and, and it go, it's gone in a flash, but I promise it has such a, a huge impact on, the, on the, the, the weight, the perceived weight for the, um, for the audience. Um, let's do the same thing with the small muscles, the connective tissues in the back, okay? What, that, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get at is the um, back right now is moving up and down, right? As he's walking, there is that, the, 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 the back is kind of like doing this wave thing. That, I did that with rotation X in the main controller. So let's look at that and I bet you, yeah, it's like basically a, a sine wave. That's fine and all, but we want it to look like it's a strain to hold that up and then it just gets exhausted and it falls. So we just need to modify the tangents just a little bit to make it, uh, to make it um, feel like that, okay? So let's see what is what here. I believe that the up pose is actually, or the up curve is actually the down, right? So this, view infinity, okay. So the, the downward part of the, the, the the uh, valley or the trough of this curve is actually the up pose, meaning it needs to hold on to that up pose before it kind of falls really rapidly into that down pose. And then let's also modify these tangents. Let's free these tangent weights to basically, we want to break them as well, so that it, it kind of holds into that 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 upward position a little bit more. All right, so let's see what this looks like. Maybe a little dramatic. All right, ignore ignore the uh, you know ignore the rest of the limbs. Watch basically just this front leg, the shoulder, and 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 that dynamic how it's working with the um, spine. Okay, you see how, you, you, uh, one thing that's happening is that this is extending way too quickly. Um, I like this pose, but it's, um, it's just getting there too quickly. I'm going to just reduce it just a little bit. There we go. And now I'm sure that that curve is way crazy right now. Yeah, all these tangents just need to be fixed. Just smoothed out like this. Okay. Cool. Okay. So looking at just this arm, this shoulder blade, and, and how it's working with the, the body that's kind of like falling onto uh, that, that hand, we can already start seeing how it looks like the connective tissues and the supporting muscles, those little muscles do not scale well. Okay. The gigantic muscles, the quadriceps, you know, you know uh, the the uh, basically the shoulders, the um, the, the the pecs, um, 
scale very, very, very well. That's why like a gorilla can literally tear a, a, a person limb from limb when they're like, you know, like a, a year old. The baby gorilla is like lethal, right? Um, those muscles scale very, very well. But the little muscles, they don't scale very well at all. And, and when we're looking at a, a character like this, especially the amount, it's a little dramatic right now, I'll probably tone that down, but especially the amount that this guy is basically, um, you know, falling onto this hand and the, the hand is really stomping, it definitely looks like it is labor to keep that back straight as he is taking a step. It looks like there's just that moment where everything just exhausts and, and it has to land on, onto that, that front foot, okay? So um, I went ahead and put all of those things into, um, all those things into the character already. Um, it's kind of like a Julia Child's cooking show where you, um, Nope, sorry, that was, this is just both of them um, um, next to each other. Okay, here we go, fast in footfalls, here it is. And I also did a little bit of work on the uh, spine, and I also did a little bit of work on the head. Okay, the head, exact same thing. Okay, the tangents needed to be spread out a little bit. The rotation, um, I actually hadn't, Hadn't um, worked on the rotation in this, um, this file yet, but um, we can do that right now if you like, actually. Um, the rotation as well, it's good because like that muscle in the back of your neck that keeps your neck up, right? If you're leaning forward, you have to flex that muscle to keep your neck up, right? So when you're coming down, there's a certain point where just like the weight and the gravity is just too much and it's gonna, like quicker, quicker, you know, this, this is the part where the speed actually is it's opposite of what you might think. There's, there's a, actually a quicker kind of snap of the head than on a, a small cat. Like, just think about it, a small cat, like it's stalking, you know, it can keep its head absolutely perfectly straight. But just imagine a, a cat the size of a, a bus and it's prowling, you, you would expect to see you know, a little bit of like wobble in its head, even when it's prowling, just because of those connective tissues, you have to be working on, you know, the material level. So let's just, um, let's just put this um, change in, okay? Um, let's just, I'm kind of arbitrarily scaling the amount of um, overlap is happening in the head. Um, I'm gonna delay it just a little bit more. That looks like it's this, the up pose is that, and we're going to, um, free these tangents, break them, and go like this so that it's just a little bit, a little bit more on the, on the up, okay? All right, you see how his head is up for longer, but at the end of it, man, that, it, it just has to go. Let's, um, Let's make this even more dramatic, even more dramatic. So, okay. You see that? Oh, so cool. Check that out. See how it's almost like it, 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 it's holding on until it, those little muscles give out. And I promise you, it is, it is subtle, but those, that, that subtlety, as small as it looks right now, that is a dead giveaway for the, for the weight of this character. Just the tiniest difference. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, look at this. You, we started with a curve that basically looked like this, right? And we ended with a curve that basically had this bias into it and dropped quicker and the same thing. Look at the difference here between these two curves. That, that is a dead giveaway 
And if you can imagine that this is a dead giveaway for, for the, you know, for the weight of the, of the head, I mean, imagine how much, how many opportunities exist in your character to like hone in on those materials and animate it in a way that really shows how the materials are scaling, okay? And, you know, the cartilage can't hold up all that weight. The little muscles, the supporting muscles, you know, the tiny little sinews, you know, not the glamour muscles, not the muscle beach muscles, but those supporting muscles also can't, can't hold on, okay? You'll also notice that I put a little bit of um, animation in the ears here. Let's, uh, I'll just show you what I did here. Looks like I scaled the controls accidentally. There we go. Okay. So, like I already told you, it feels like the middle of a, like an extremity always does better than the base and the tips. So what I did is I grabbed the base and I put some overlap on the base itself. Okay, and then a little bit of like a flicking overlap on the ears, uh, on, the, on the tips of the ears, using just these last three controllers. No animation actually on these um, second three controllers. It's only the first one and the, and the last three. Okay, so you see that? And I could probably go a little bit bigger on the, the ears, uh, the, the base overall, but this choice that I've made right here, the, the fact that just the tips are kind of overlapping betrays the, the, the materials. Or actually, it, it's true to the materials, but it, it betrays the, the nature of the materials that they, they, you know, they just, you know, they're trying to hold up, but you know what? We, we, we know better. And this much cartilage on a big creature, imagine he's like 20 feet tall, you know, and we're looking up at him. This much cartilage, it just cannot hold up, right? No, there's no muscle in there, sorry, right? So it's just, it's just going to wobble a little bit. Whereas if this was a smaller creature, you know, we're looking down on like, you know, little, you know, two foot at the shoulder creature, then I would be putting overlap really smooth um, pretty much through all the entire ear um, it would be a tiny bit of overlap. Overall, the, the ear would be stiffer overall, but the amount of overlap that's in there would be, would be more evenly distributed, okay? So um, I also did that. I also put some, uh, a little bit of love on the, um, actually, that's, this is the wrong version of the file. I did the front and back feet. Um, oh, no, this is the wrong version of the file. Let me open up the next one. Hide the old Nico. Okay. I also, uh, so I added it to the back feet as well. There's that really slapping um, movement. As you can see, the shoulders and this, the, the, the feet in front really are feeling like they're taking weight on very strongly. And then I did what I, I told you I, I kind of like to see in the tail of big creatures. It's kind of as a whole, it's moving back and forth and it, it kind of feels like it has you know, a, a stiff middle and that it's really only moving a little bit at the base and then a little bit at the um, uh, tip as well. I find that that normally looks uh, the, the best in terms of trying to scale something because tails are actually very meaty. There's a lot of muscle in there and the bones don't, um, you know, the, the connective tissues and the bones, they don't actually weigh um, too much. It's, it's very muscular, tails are. So they do scale a little bit better than, say, you know, an arm or, or whatever. So um, you have a little bit more leeway with something like um, the tail. Um, I did a little bit of extra work here on the tips of the ears. And I think I, yeah, I made the ears overlap outwards just a little bit more on this version, okay? Um, and then uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of more work. Um, this is called final, but it was the scene that I wanted to kind of um, finish up showing you how to put uh, more into the uh, scene on. 
Uh, one last thing that I definitely would want to add is uh, the knee and elbow wiggle. Now, again, a lot of people, I've heard people say like, oh, well, that's just like a cheap trick. Like you slowed it down and you added like the knee wiggle. Well, if you know why you're doing it, then it's not a cheat, okay? You're not cheating at all, okay? So part of your workflow can be to get the weight right by using the speed and the understanding of the scale of the materials and gravity to your advantage, okay? And then, <clears throat> excuse me, and then the... Um, probably, I don't know, end of blocking plus, probably beginning of polish, you can do a pass where you're doing some, some more of these, maybe the word for it is standard weight uh, fixes or, or dead giveaways. I'm like, I, I, I like that term because it really is. And basically just what a knee wiggle is, is acknowledging the fact that in here, that in here, in the groin of a, uh, a quadruped especially, but even like a biped, if you're doing a T-Rex, the knee wiggles really looked good on Jurassic Park. We copied them for Kong. Um, it's just in the groin, there's very weak muscles, okay? You know, the, this, this thing has, Nico has extremely long legs. You know, these look super powerful. It looks like he could, he could leap like 20 feet in the air. He's super powerful. But, you know, can he, can he hold like a, a watermelon between his knees? Absolutely not. It, it's very, very weak um, horizontally or laterally, you know, these muscles in here. So what that means is, is that when a foot comes down and it really slams, bam, on the ground. Actually, you know, I probably want to make this even more impactful. Um, when a foot comes down, it really ought to, oh yeah, see? Sometimes I do uh, work in, in one version and then I like either don't save the file or I'm like, okay, well, I'll do it again in the other version. And which one does this one have? So sorry that I have to kind of do work two or three times here. Okay. Okay. So when the foot comes down and, and lands on the ground, basically what it means is that there's so much energy coming down at a slight angle. You see how he's walking um, kind of in a line, right? It's not, it's not a, um, it's not a uh, walk where his you know, foot is directly underneath his hip out here. It's actually a little bit more um, brought into a line. And on a finished walk cycle, of course, you all know that in the passing pose, you want the foot to come out a little bit and rotate inwards and, and all these nice things. So, you know, that would be in there in the final walk. We're just doing the weight right now. But when the foot comes down at just slight an angle, basically what this is showing is that the connective tissue and the, and the weak muscles of the groin can't handle it. Even, even just the slightest amount of lateral movement, um, it can't handle. So we like to put a little bit of, um, we would put a little bit of knee wobble in close sketchbook <clears throat> while that's reloading. So I'm gonna add that really quickly to the, um, the, to the four limbs, to the arms and the legs. It won't take two seconds to do straightforward. And then, um, and then you'll see that, yeah, okay, it's kind of a uh, MSG. It's kind of like a visual MSG. You can sprinkle it in and it always makes something look heavier. But we don't do that. We, know, we have a workflow and we know how to get to the point where we would, actually, we would actually put that in of our own volition even if we never heard of that. Because we are looking at the whole body and we're honing in on those um, muscles, okay? So... Don't let anyone, I know I'm, uh, you know, don't let anyone tell you that it's cheating. Basically the point here. Okay, let me just fix this one. All right, let me do the elbow. And 
and I'll do this one as well. Seeable, yep. Ooh, this needs to be, looks like I didn't uh, do it on this side. Oh, I guess I did. Oh, it's just not timed correctly. Oops, too far. There we go, okay. Slams down, rock and roll. All right, now let me hide these controls and we'll see what we got. Wow, feeling really cool, feeling really cool. I think we can do a little bit more with the base of the tail. Remember the, the, the base, it always feels like it, it, it basically is like almost out of control because there's so much movement in the base of a, of a tail like this. So let me just, um, let me just see here, what's this doing? Just amp it up a little bit. For sure, this can be just a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. And it's really nice how this this leg is slamming, and you know you get the nice detail of that that elbow uh, jiggle. You can probably even amp it up just a little bit more. Let's just see what it looks like if I go just a little bit crazier with it. <clears throat> Translate X. Um, just, just double it just by multiply equals two. And you want to, you want to watch these things I'm sorry I didn't point this out. You want to watch these things without, with the controllers hidden. These very last things, because you want them to be the size where you can just feel them. But with the controllers showing, you can just see it like jiggling back and forth and going like super crazy. Um, and that kind of gives it, gives it way too much, you know, it overdoes it in your mind. So you want to hide the, the controls when you're watching things like this. Yeah, that feels better. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you. This is the original um, Nico. I have to play blast this, unfortunately, because uh, it doesn't play fast enough on my um, computer. Um, I think that'll do it. Um, and then I'll, I'll um, unhide the version that is just the slowed um, by two. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> Here's our original walk cycle. Here is our new one with all of those things that I was talking about. We picked a new speed based on the scale. Okay, we decided, we honed in on the materials. We found the parts of the body that are looking like they are not scaling well and will not be able to support this new weight and then we added the animation on top of it that uh, really sold that concept starting with those really fast in to those those long footfalls uh, then moving on to the kind of the delay in the fall of the body also added it to the hips stiffened the tail up in the middle and made it um, basically um, much looser and, and weaker in the base and the tip. Uh, also made the head feel like instead of this one where there's really, it feels like there's really strong muscles, you know, all around in the neck that are basically moving it um, all around. This one it really feels like it's coming to the end of its, uh, its strength and there's just a point where it, it kind of breaks. 
Okay. Um, same thing with the ears. Okay, I know this one doesn't have animation in the ears, but it would be basically gradual and, and, and pretty evenly distributed throughout, I would say. And then we did the kind of the, the little tricks that um, work, but we do them because we know what we're actually going for. This little knee jiggle, that actually has a purpose for our, for our animation, whereas with others, um, it probably wouldn't. Okay, they would just throw that in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unhide the old Nico and now they're right on top of each other. This is the old Nico slowed down to 50%. And why I'm showing you this is because I want you to see how much difference there is between our new one and the old one in timing and um, with, uh, you know, with, with a whole lot of things. So as you can see, um, especially in the footfalls, the way the shoulder is really moving, the, the spine, you can't quite tell. Uh, maybe there should be two different colors. Let me see if I can do that. Um, the spine is kind of going in and out of the, uh, of the, um, of the new one, meaning that the, the, the spine has a very unique new timing to it. Okay, so the new yeah, so the new one is the dark Nico. Okay. Um, so let's just watch right here. You see how the spine is uh, basically, uh, it's delayed and then it falls onto the feet. Okay. So the gray one is just if we slowed it down. Our dark gray one is when we actually make the adjustments according to the materials. And the head is very dramatic. See, look how, look how different the head is on the one where we actually decided, okay, the neck muscles can't hold it up. I think the difference is, is really apparent there. And now let's, we've already watched, we've already watched them next to each other. Now let's just um, scale this guy up. And it needs to translate twice as much backwards to fix that. So this is not negative 160, it's negative uh, 320. Okay, I'm gonna unhide the other Nico. And now with this actual scale change, I think we'll see something pretty dramatic. I hope I did the math right, 160, 320, right? God, I'm so bad at math. Yeah, there we go. So here we are. So I think that pretty much covers it with, um, let's just go through it really quickly one more time what your workflow is going to be. It's going to start with uh, getting an understanding of the scale of the scene. I definitely recommend just doing a bouncing ball in your scene and when you have a wild scale change. I don't do that anymore because I've done enough shots, but um, if you're practicing and you're learning, um, definitely a great idea. And then you want to use your understanding of the way that the speed is determined by the scale to scale the creature, scale the weight, scale the actual creature itself, but actually come to an understanding of how that creature put together the way it is, is going to be weaker in some areas and not be able to do the motions that a smaller, lighter character can. And then it's basically, it just comes down to animating those choices. We start, I like to start with the footfalls. It always feels really good when you have that high footfall come into a really hard fast in and basically the arm can't take it. Something has to take it. The shoulders have to take it. Normally I go into the shoulders. The hips have to take it, go into the hips. Um, it really makes a big difference. On a, a bipedal character, I animated a shot for the Animals and Creatures lectures for Animation Mentor. And um, for, for those lectures, uh, I, I, you know, I animated the troll and he has a ton of weight, of course, and I went into the hips a lot on all of these slamming uh, uh, footfalls. Then we went into the spine and just 
massaged it a little bit, but made the choice that it was going to delay because those flexors in the back are going to hold as long as they can, but then they're just going to exhaust and fall onto those feet. And that's why those footfalls are so hard because that's what's happening in the back. We adjusted the head. And then I talked a little bit about how cartilage and sinews kind of have a very, very weird way they scale, which is that, you know, they're kind of in the middle they work. So, you know, the, the, the base and the, the tips kind of all fall apart. And um, we applied that concept to the ears. We applied it a little bit to the tail. We adjusted the tail once we saw it. And then you get your little uh, things that are for free, like the elbow wiggles and the knee wiggles um, when they're moving. So um, that would be your uh, end of blocking plus, probably beginning of polish, where you could add that kind of willy-nilly. You can probably add that and, and, and know that you're, you're getting away with it. But we don't do it just because we, we heard that that's a good thing to do. We now do it because we understand the relationship between speed and scale and uh, the materials, okay? So uh, I'm gonna give you that final version of the scene file so you can um, unhide all of the uh, characters and you can work on the walk cycle if you want to. Um, I hope this has been an eye-opening lecture for you. Um, weight is an extremely important issue and chances are, I mean, we've already had two Titans movies and we've had, uh, I don't know how many monster films, Cloverfield, King Kong, um, uh, Godzilla, the list goes on and on and on and on where you have to have a massive creature moving in a believable way. So just remember these workflow tips that I gave you and go for the dead giveaways. That'll do it. Thank you for watching. Good luck with your animation and as always, rock on.